Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to you. We How have, are you doing? I'm doing well. It's day 20, amazingly. Uh -huh. Hanukkah started, I mean, I'm not Jewish, but if I understand, if I understand correctly, that's always a question. But I think Hanukkah started at sundown last night. Well, for us. So it would be two days ago when this airs. So the night of the 18th is when it started. Okay. Yeah. But we have a fun interview with Shana, our knitting Hanukkah expert. <laughs> and it, and it's so funny. I mean, in her like real life day job, she's an attorney. And I don't even, I mean, I totally right. forgot that. Because <laughs> to me, she's the knitting Hanukkah expert. <laughs> right. So she's that's super. Her, that's her job. She knits yeah. and she tells us about Hanukkah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Did you see that? <laughs> I saw a tail go by as I looked. Yeah. Up. She jumped up and then went to the hole right here. Nice. That's what she does. In the hole. But she's fast. So it's like whoosh, a shadow. Speedy. She, yes. Speedy. Right on. So it's day 20. I should get my it day is. 20 package. I'll get my package from behind me while you show everybody your progress because you moved yeah. right along. So I've been working on my sleeve from my Sanderling. So this is what I have so far. That's a lot. So yeah, I I always forget. And I know I'm looking down a lot. It's because this is wonderful yarn from Green Mountain Spinnery. And it's not been like overly treated and stuff. So every now and then there's a little bit of vegetable matter. So I'm just sitting here picking little bits as I'm doing it. But it's, it's such a nice yarn. Oh, so nice. And you Mostly know, wool, a little yeah. bit of mohair. But I'm just going to say, I don't mind, quote, rustic yarn. I mean, yeah, it's I don't real. either. It's I real. prefer it, to be honest. I think it has more character to it. Um, so anyway, so that's how far I got. And I'm remi reminded of how long sleeves take. I always forget how long sleeves take until I do a sleeve. And uh, so I'm knitting. I'm knitting it in lace mm -hmm. as I'm decreasing along the underarm line or the sleeve sure driving me crazy <laughs> um but so that's that's slowing me down a little bit because I do have to think I can't just keep going round and round so but you know but it is getting smaller and smaller and yes. uh yeah You've so done I'm a lot. maybe have this sleeve done in two days yeah. And then go on to the next one. And then it depends. I mean, you said you have a busy day, so kind of depends. I do. I have a busy day. I just have a lot of whatever stuff to do. We have the yarn stash restash coming up starting the 26th. Uh that'll be on my Instagram page. And so I need to oh, get like posts. I thought it oh I okay. Look, I thought it started after the new year. So uh, no, okay. it's it's the week up to New Year and the week after oh, New Year. Oh, that's because, why I was confused. Okay. Yeah. I got yeah. into the habit of using oh, yeah, that time. Like that in the US, we tend to do spring cleaning, deep cleaning. Yeah. In the Philippines, because of the the ties with China and Chinese culture, that yeah. you do your big clean out before the new year. Sure. And that's also, we talked about with the Hogmanay boxes, like in Scotland, you're supposed to clean everything out before the new year. So that's sort of the mindset that I'm, you know, like, let's get the stash reorganized. Well, and set and I will year. say just from a hygienic standpoint, because of the flu and cold season that we usually have during the winter, because everybody's inside, it's not a bad idea to do a little end of the year yeah. clean. Just, just, you know, a good clean. if you live where it's warm enough to open the windows for an hour, I mean, that's not a bad yeah. thing. To, yeah, not a bad thing to do, especially since like we've been sick. Lots of people have been sick. Yeah, it's going Goodness around. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, yep. knock on wood. Knock on wood. Right. I have, <laughs> but my kid was super sick. Yeah. How is she doing? She's good. She's totally yeah. fine. She's sleeping a lot. She still has that like lingering, <clears throat> you know. I mean, that takes a while. Just the dregs of it take a while right. to work through. But, you know, she's had a... Uh, a week now of antibiotics. So, I mean, after day two of antibiotics, she was like, yeah, you better. start to really feel better quick. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's yeah. fine. Good. So thankfully I know a lot of people have been really wiped out, but she's, you know, she's a teenager. They are pretty resilient. Yeah. So yeah, sure. look, you can start to see the pink coming oh, on. Yeah. yeah. This has been fun. I should be knitting other things, but I'm like, Oh, just one more mini. <laughs> 
Yeah. I so, have to uh, adjust my, pardon me, while I adjust my screen brightness, I'm like, I could probably see a lot better than I am. Yeah, so I'm yes. excited. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful. So how, how many minis is that? Or have you lost track? No, I have not lost track. Oh, because they're numbered, huh? Uh-huh, because my daughter went and numbered them all in the order she wanted them. Right. So right now I'm knitting number eight. Okay. This is number nine. There are 21. So in the middle of 10, yeah, no. In the middle of 11 or 10 and a half, yeah. in the middle of 10, you know how you have five. No, it'll five, be the middle of 11. So you have 10 on each side. And in the middle of 11 is when you'll switch. And then it's also correct. Yeah. That seems wrong. No, you're right. Okay. <laughs> so that's when I'll start decreasing and that will be the diagonal center of right. my square. So, so yeah, this is the next. Pretty. The next skein. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Very nice. So should we open our our yeah. day empty? Let's do that. Let me yeah. I'm knitting. I don't have, mind me. I'm knitting. No, it's fine. I have like 30 rows left on a sock. I really need to get that done so I can wear them because it's cold this week. I have a couple things I'm gonna frog. And just so for day my, 20. Desk. Day 20, we have yeah. one more Ooh. Of midnight. I love that. I know it's such a great color. So these are our colors. We have two midnight and three of the purpley pink shades. Ooh. And so tomorrow is a pattern. It's and a you already packet. told us it's Fair Isle. So I'm excited Ooh, about that. Spoilers. Yeah. You know, I just wish I had more time to, I mean, sleeping is overrated. I just want to knit. I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to get the eight to 10 hours. I know. I, know. I went it's to bed important. at a reasonable time last night. I think it was like 10 o'clock. Yeah. It's so I woke up at like 2.30. <laughs> Whoops. And was awake for like 45 minutes and then fell back asleep and then was back asleep until my alarm went off at seven. So that's good. Like Ooh. together, that's okay. That's not bad. No, that's not bad at all. The whole uninterrupted eight hours. Oh, I don't know no. if that's ever going to happen. That's okay. I don't think I've slept through the night like that since I was in my early 20s. I know. Young people. How do they do it? Well, and in my early, in my twenties, I became a 911 dispatcher. And then there was like right. the shift work and the midnights and, you know, you're all messed up. And then, then I had kids. And so, you know, I don't think I've slept through the night for the last 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Most people don't. It's okay to That's get about up. where I am. Well, that used to be the norm. You'd go to sleep with the yeah. sun and then wake up in the middle of the night for a while and then go back to sleep. That's okay. Yeah. Napping is good too. I do like a nap. Okay. Do you want to guess where we're at today? Yes. Hold okay. on. Yes. Show me a thing. Show me. Show me the money. No. Okay. And this this sticker isn't going to help you. Okay. So, so where were where were we last time? Was that we that were, was the New Orleans, right? Yeah, we were with Tara in okay. New Orleans. So she was delightful. Yes. So geographically, we're still south mm -hmm. but okay. this sticker won't help is that a green just a green hank of yarn yes okay not gonna help you but i feel like the pink mm. hank of yarn was so serpent like that it's like you know so you could get to arizona from that right like you could and i i think they have lots of of serpents in this particular state because it's in the south and everything's creepy crawly where it's warm and humid yeah. So is it Florida? Would it be Florida? No. Is it Georgia would be my next Woo! guess? I don't know. We didn't interview this person, so I don't even have a well, clue. We, from we did. But oh, we today did? we're having, we did. Oh! But today we're having our interview. Where are they from? We're having our interview with Shana because of Hanukkah. And we did interview these people, but it will be on a, in a, a later date. A, Was a it Mississippi? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I remember who it was. I didn't get to do that interview this year, but I remember them from last year. So yeah, Mississippi. A, a scheduling conflict. You know, so. where they have green snakes that reach out like branches. But look how pretty. Pretty. That is, is pretty. Yes. From Judy and Emily in Mississippi. That's the point of gems. Judy, yep. Emily, Mississippi. Gems, Lux Fibers. And look, look, they included this little Mississippi steamboat. Oh, thing. cool. Yeah. That's very that. cool. That's really nice. And this is called, this is their Lux Sock Mini 7525. 
and it's the colorway is on the sippy on the sippy that's funny yeah. my, so we my... Had an interview with them but we had to shift our schedule yeah. a little bit because we wanted to inter- talk with Shana again about Hanukkah because yeah. she's super fun and she's a riot so yeah, we so will they be come talking in yes, like a yes. week I think there's yeah. comes we just had a scheduling yeah because there's two boxes and Hanukkah yeah, yeah. that's okay so, and they yeah. were super cool about about adjusting their date right so all right awesome how was your weekend we didn't talk about your weekend at all well if you notice i'm still damp can't find my hair dryer and i think i left it outside and that's part of my weekend <laughs> i know you're like why is your hair dryer why? outside? i assumed it was because your bougie goats um <laughs> they got fluffed and dried Fancy no, for the i weekend. had an outside an outside quote frost free mm. hydrant that froze so not so effective oh so, yeah um you know the handle that thing and then the pipe that comes out of the ground and when you turn it off it's supposed to drain the water all the way out of the pipe well for some reason it didn't um, so i had like an old metal housing from a water heater and i put that whole tube down over the pipe okay and then plugged in the hair dryer and and hung that down in there and then covered the top, you know, to keep the heat in. Right. Let that run for like an hour. Uh huh. And it worked. But that's why. Awesome. I'm and then I put the hair dryer someplace, and now I'm not sure where. Yeah. And now I the didn't realize did have do have it, and you're gonna have to ransom it back. I didn't even me. realize I got out of the shower and I'm looking around. I'm like, <laughs> and of course, at first my mind went to, oh, I wonder if the, you know, if, if my daughter borrowed the hair dryer. I'm like, no, right, no. Of course, you know, it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> And I've, I got to thinking about that as soon as you're an, you know, when we're empty nesters, which will happen shortly, there's nobody to blame. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's us or gremlins, you know? <laughs> well, there's that. Or maybe Walt, the ghost. Walt, the ghost. Yeah. I don't think he would take my hair dryer though. We have one named Ethan, I guess. I don't know. I haven't seen signs of it myself, but. <laughs> but your family says that. But my oldest insists. So <laughs> you have ethereal Ethan. Ethan. Ethan mm-hmm. comes and slams doors and things. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Oh, guess what else? I started watching Shetland because I hadn't yet. Oh. I mean, I've seen like the from first... the beginning. No, or... no, no. I've seen the first few seasons. Okay. And I thought all I had left was the most recent season. But no, I hadn't watched the one before that yet either. So I started, I think I'm on six because isn't there seven? Okay. Yeah, there's seven and they're doing like, an eight. Oh, I thought it was over after seven. No, Douglas Hen- Henshaw. Henshaw? Hen- Henshaw. Henshaw. Okay. Good old Doug. Doug um, left the show at the end of seven. Okay. But they're carrying on and they have a new person. And I recognize her by sight. She's been in a lot of British shows. She was in Dying. Have you? No, not Dying. There's, who's the British comedian? See, this is going to be fun for viewers. They're Um, yelling at the screen if they know. He did the original Office. Afterlife. So the show's called Afterlife and he's in it and his, his wife has died and it's him dealing with the death of his wife and then he makes a female friend and she is that female friend and then he did another show that had her in it and she's usually like I wouldn't say she's a comedic actress necessarily but she's sort of like the straight person in the comedy oh and she has good lines but she's not like the the right comedic right. force of it She's but she serious. is excellent at what she does and so she is going to be the new head detective i guess okay so we'll have to i'll have to just insert a title yeah bottom, put her name bottom. right here <laughs> and when we figure it out when you go on like imdb.com right. and sort that out and shoot me a message then i'll okay <laughs> we'll put it right here right here <laughs> okay all right let's yeah cut over to our interview with Shana for Hanukkah awesome. that was super fun yeah and I'll see you tomorrow okay adios bye, bye. so we are here today with Shana Hofstetter our 
our Hanukkah expert for this is our third year running that you've worked with Jana or I to talk uh, or both of us to talk about Hanukkah with our listeners slash viewers. And we're happy to have you back again. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Because apparently there's more to it than than slotkas and games. I mean, there's not much more to it, but I thought since this is the third year, I might go into some other, you know, little trivia facts and look up some more things for those people who have watched all three, you know, for the past two years, we don't want to bore them with the same old uh, information. So, and we will put right. we'll put the link down below in the video's description of the previous two yep. podcasts that we had. If you want to go back and get mm-hmm. the basics of Hanukkah, but if you feel like you already know, or you're obviously Jewish and you know, but I had no clue. So I'm up. I'm ready for the update. All right. So I guess right. we'll do a real quick a real quick what why we're talking about Hanukkah um, just for in case the people don't want to go back or didn't or didn't view it. So very quickly, uh, the story of Hanukkah is the story of the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem. It was captured by uh, Greek soldiers. It was uh, used as a pagan temple. And then the uh, a, a band of Jewish soldiers known as the Maccabees came and recaptured the temple and rededicated it. Um, and so they, the sort of story of the, the menorah and why we're uh, lighting candles and all is because um, there is a lamp in the temple that is supposed to be burned eternally at all the time. And there was only enough oil to keep the lamp going for one day it was going to take eight days to go get the right oil to continue burning the lamp. And actually the one day's worth of oil lasted for all eight days, which is the miracle of Hanukkah. And one of the reasons, one theory as to why we celebrate Hanukkah for eight days. In our little did you know Hanukkah facts uh, <laughs> session today, uh, I also found another explanation as to why Hanukkah lasts for eight days. Oh. Yes, I thought this is really interesting. So another explanation as to why Hanukkah is lasts for eight days is because when the uh, Jewish soldiers, the Maccabees, recaptured the temple, they had been unable to celebrate the uh, a prior holiday, the holiday of Sukkot, which is a harvest holiday in the fall, which lasts for a week, they hadn't been able to celebrate it at the temple because it had been occupied by these Greek soldiers. And so once they recaptured the temple, they then said, okay, we're going to celebrate Sukkot now. And so they celebrated Sukkot, which is a pilgrimage holiday, which means everybody would be going to the temple, not anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's another sort of explanation as to why Hanukkah actually lasts for eight days, which I thought was really very interesting. Interesting. Um, so, little known fact. There's, there's your first one. You can okay. You can keep track. Yeah, is Sukkot, um, Sukkot is when people build the, the um, huts outside. Yes. Uh, yeah. The joke is that it is Nomadic Hut Appreciation Week, and <laughs> basically, yes, you have like a small hut outside of your home where. You're, you have walls, but you're supposed to be able to see the sky and the stars. And it's a, it's a harvest holiday. Um, and, you know, there are some, you eat out there, you can sleep in the, in the sukkah. And it used to be a pilgrimage holiday. So everybody would be coming in their, in their tiny nomadic huts um, to Jerusalem. But obviously no longer. Yes, Jana. I want to so know funny. what they make them out of. What do they make the tent hut thing out of? Well, now you can make it out of, you know, like people have it out of canvas and people have it out of tarp, but uh, the roof structure is usually either bamboo, like slats, Uh so you can see through or, you know, sort of like wood planks that you can see in between. Uh Um, And then you decorate it with all kinds of other, you know. So are you going to have a winter camp out then in your backyard? No, no, I am not. No, I don't, I don't live in winter camp out area. 
So uh, no, that's not cool for me. And also, yeah, I'm indoorsy. I'm not outdoorsy like you are, Jana. <laughs> I'm all thinking, huh? All right, camp out, yeah. tent, mesh. You know, mosquito netting opening. You can see the stars. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. So that's that's little known fact about uh, Hanukkah. Number one is why is it eight days? There are in fact several explanations, and one of the things that I will say about uh, Judaism in general is that you're always going to find another explanation, another interpretation, a joke, debate, questions, you know, that's part of the fun. So, and you know, Jewish people have all kinds of jokes for everything. Well, yes, it's dark humor, but you know, it's developed over generations that either you're going to laugh or you're going to cry. So you better laugh. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's little, on, little known fact number one. Yes. Little known fact number two. Are we ready? Yes. All right. So I think by now everyone has heard me wax poetic on the uh, the beauty that is the potato pancake, also known as a latka. And yes, once again, not sponsored. I am shilling for the for the latka makers. <laughs> so if you don't want to to grate the potatoes yourself. There's no shame in this game, guys. Go, you will find this in your grocery store, uh, usually in the kosher section or the international section. And there's all kinds of delicious potato pancakes. I want to say that not, yes. the, not the box in the front, but the other box in the back that has kind of the orange. The man yeah, yeah, I've actually seen that here in Wyoming, yes. believe it or not. That's right. It, it can be had. You can find these wherever you know, food and deliciousness is sold. So you're going to want <laughs> these and a bunch of oil, right? Because the idea behind uh, Hanukkah is that you're celebrating the oil. And so the idea is to eat a bunch of fried foods. So one traditional fried food is the potato pancake. Another traditional fried food is a jelly filled donut, which is, yeah, which is the uh, preferred food in Israel. And so a trivia fact about, so the donut is called a sufganiya, uh, multiple donuts, sufganiyot. And every year in Israel, supposedly, according to the internet, <laughs> 175 million sufganiyot are consumed in Israel every year. Now, the Jewish population of Israel is 7 million. So if you're considering that each Jewish person in Israel are, are, is only eating these are only eating these donuts during Hanukkah, that means that everyone is eating more than three donuts a day, <laughs> which seems like a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, are they? Are we talking it? like donut hole size or like no. donut? No, donut, donut. Nice. Yeah. That sounds so like I think this is. I doubt that this is only during Hanukkah, the 175 million. But in case there are any Israelis watching, please tell us below in the comments. Yeah. How, How many, many donuts you? are you eating every single day of Hanukkah? Well, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I, I'm here for it. Yes. And then I maybe love, I love bedtime it. time with tea. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, that might, that's a lot of donut, 175 million. So... <laughs> There it is. Um, but it, I wanted to actually bring up another Hanukkah, a, another traditional Hanukkah food that we haven't talked about at all. Yeah. Okay. So another traditional Hanukkah food is actually cheese. And <laughs> yes. And Anne, you're <laughs> going to really love this because this is going to speak to your uh, religious studies uh, major in college. So there is the story of Judith who uh, beheads, for a better, <laughs> so really better turn, who beheads uh, the Assyrian general, General Holophanes. And the way that she sort of, and this is also like tangential to the Hanukkah story. Mm -hmm. So she brings him salty cheeses in a, in a picnic basket and wine and convinces him to keep eating the cheese. So he has to keep drinking the wine and gets he gets so drunk, he passes out. She then 
murders him. And but is that the, she, ten, the 10 spike to the ear story? Is that? No, that that's one? Yael. Okay, sorry. <laughs> We, that's the, like Janet is like this has gone a whole different road. <laughs> Old Testament, man. I love the Old Testament. <laughs> so I knew I knew you'd love this. I knew you'd love this. So so she beheads him by and cuts off his head, and then show you know sort of shows everyone all of his soldiers who then flee because they're like I don't want my head to get cut off. This isn't this is terrible. And so that's that's also part of the story of like the the Jews battle scenes and so there is a a a tradition that's sort of gone out of fashion actually um of eating cheese so i think for this year's hanukkah that the ultimate hanukkah food has to be mozzarella sticks because you have cheese it's fried in oil and it's also one of my very favorite foods of all time. So there you go. Yep. There you go. Back. We're bringing it back. Okay. Mozzarella so the mozzarella sticks will celebrate the whacking of the soldier guy. Yes. That's not the same whacking of something about a tent stake. In no, a- that's a different story. All right. We'll, I guess we'll the soundtrack that. there. Again. We'll save that for another day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. so now we have potato cakes, cheese, donuts, mozzarella sticks. Yes. Salty ideal. cheese. So Just think about ideal. bringing that back in um, to, your, to your Hanukkah celebration. So moving on to gambling. Hooray. <laughs> Hooray for gambling. So I, I brought a baseball themed. I should have brought the sock. Oh, wait, here we go. World Cup themed. There you go. We're recording during the World, dreidel. World Cup. The dreidel. Yes. <laughs> World Cup themed dreidel. Okay. So the dreidel uh, as is a, it's a spinning top. Yeah. It's a game, uh, mostly for kids. And the letters have been interpreted to say a great miracle happened there, meaning Israel. Mm-hmm. Or in Israel, this letter, uh, instead of being there, would be changed to here. So it'd be a different letter on the, on the dreidel. Um, And, you know, most often people use gelt, which are the chocolate coins Mm -hmm. or, you know. But I'm thinking it could be an adult drinking game. Sure. Totally adult (laughs) drinking game possibility. Sure. Not, I've never seen that happen, but I'm sure. You could host that. Yeah. I'm just saying mozzarella sticks, wine, dreidel, drink. Yeah. Done, done. So this is, we're, we've really gone adult with this. This is not family friendly. <laughs> so, uh, so interesting note about the dreidel is uh, there is this, there's sort of two theories as to where dreidels have come from. There is the European theory, which is that this was actually an, Eng- an English and Irish game that then moved to Germany that was then adopted by the Jewish population in, in Germany um, because the way that you play with, you know, whether you win everything in the pot or put some in or take half or what have you really follows um, this original Irish and English game. There's also a Jewish tale uh, or tradition that Actually, this was used to te- to do sort of Jewish teachings. So you would be like secretly teaching, and then when the you know Greek soldiers would come, you would you know pull out your top and be like, "Oh no, we're not we're not." Oh studying no, we're just playing this game. We're playing this game. Okay. I will say that my my son was taught that in Sunday school, so you know I, it, it's probably a little bit of all right? It's probably all of these things. Um, But there is, you know, fun, fun facts about dreidels and dreidels can come in. So we got baseball themed, we have soccer or football themed. Um, I also have a basketball theme. I mean, I just think that the adult version should have like different types of things to drink and then you spin and then whatever's up is what you get. Well, I will say that this one, um, was filled with candy on the inside. 
Oh. So also, you know, sort of taking the game all, all in one where you don't even have candy separate. Right. The candy is actually in here. And then if you win, you're like, great, dump the candy, you know, sure. and then refill mm -hmm. and go again. So cool. I think this is a new one for, for people as well. So there's lots, there are ones that make, uh, that like sing songs and oh, wow. I don't recommend those because your children are going to really love them. And then you're going to, yeah. Any toy that makes a noise, just break yeah. that right away. Break exactly. it right away. Exactly. <laughs> Take exactly. the batteries out. So where did the dreidel come from? Is it really English Irish? Is it really, you know, a way to pretend that you weren't studying Judaism when you really were? Is it both? We're, I think we're going to go with both on, on this podcast. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, other random trivia. The and uh, so for those people who don't know, I am located in Washington D.C. The first Hanukkah that was celebrated in the White House was celebrated by uh, President Truman in 1951, wow. when the Prime Minister of Israel, David Ben Gurion, gave him a menorah, which I don't think we've actually shown yet. This is not David Ben Gurion's menorah. This is mine. <laughs> Just to be clear. Okay. But here is the traditional menorah, and there are there are pictures of Harry Truman, uh, you know, getting his menorah. Um, and so that was the first celebration. And there have been, you know, Hanukkah celebrations really since then. There's a national menorah lighting ceremony every year, just like there's a national Christmas tree lighting. Um, and again, this is the helper. So we start here, right? And this one is then used to. Uh, do each of the candles. Okay. You add a candle each night. So you start with two and then you have three and then four and so on. Right. Um, and there is a debate amongst, uh, there was a debate amongst Jewish scholars as to whether you were adding candles or you were taking away candles like the dwindling of the oil. And the reason that we add candles instead of taking away candles is because you're adding uh, to basically you're adding light to the world and sort of the miracle uh, to everyone. So that's the traditional way of, of lighting the menorah. Um, and traditionally it's also put in a, if it's safe, it's put in the, in the window okay. for people to see so that the light is sort of spread, you know, right. out into the world. Right. Um, and oh, and uh, speaking of random trivia about menorahs, uh, the large, the world's largest menorah is 32 feet tall. Wow. And, uh, I, and I, my understanding is that it is uh, in New York City, which feels appropriate. That's right. That feels good. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, wow, that's quite a fire then. Uh, I think they're just light bulbs. Oh. Oh, that would, yeah, that would make sense. But it's a that huge, you know, scaffolded and you've got to go up on the cherry picker to like- To screw in the light bulb. <laughs> yes. Okay. We might have yes. to Google that. Oh, yeah, please, I wonder where that please is. Please do, please do. <laughs> um, and the my final trivia note, um, and Anne, this one's for you too, is that the story of the Maccabees, which is the story of the Jewish soldiers who recaptured the temple, is in fact in the Christian Bible, but it is not in the Hebrew Bible. So for those of you who don't know, the Old Testament is not exactly the same as the Hebrew Bible. So there are parts that Christians consider the Old Testament that actually are not part of the Jewish Bible and tradition. And the, the story of the Maccabees is one of them. So even though in Judaism, we celebrate Hanukkah, the actual story of the Maccabees is in the Christian Bible, not in the Hebrew Bible. Yeah, it's in it's in the Apocrypha books. The, yeah, so there's a lot of Christian groups that don't use the Apocrypha either. So, so that's why some like some Christians are you know they're up on it because they have the Apocrypha as part of their Bible, and some are like, what are you talking about? Um, and like interesting, like I found out the reason for that, like the Christians. Okay, so sorry, I'm getting nerdy well back up and say what the apocrypha right. is so their collection it's a collection of books that aren't necessarily viewed as scriptural but are still 
treated they're they're separate from the old testament and the new testament and some groups find them to be scripture and some are just see them as like history okay kind of, like a historical thing so when the uh the first movement in the united states to like give people free bibles happened it was cheaper to print it without the apocrypha and so different christian groups well, I'm just gonna got leave used out. to using we're the free Bible awesome. without the Apocrypha. And then they were like, well, that's not, we don't believe in that. And it was just because it was cheaper to print it without it. We'll just leave out some. Yeah. Capitalism. Okay. <laughs> and I want to say every time, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I think that because you're funny, you'll find this funny. And please know that I don't mean any disrespect. But every time you say the name of those soldiers, I think you're saying Applebee soldiers. <laughs> I'm like, well, they hey. do, you know, maybe it's the it's the fried onion, right? Like yeah. <laughs> the blooming onion. Another <laughs> delicious Hanukkah food. <laughs> yeah. Another Great. possibility. I, I happen to also love onion rings, so I'm on board. <laughs> okay, they, we could just call them the Applebee soldiers, but what are they really called again? The Maccabees. Maccabees. I don't know why my brain heard Applebee. <laughs> it's food. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're just, you're already on the, the mozzarella sticks, I think is the, is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay then. Oh. Well, Shana, thank you so much. I want to thank you for coming on again and sharing some fun Hanukkah facts with us this year and uh, being part of this again. Very grateful. And we'll Happy again. Hanukkah, everybody. Happy yeah. Hanukkah. <laughs> and we will link this. Now this is probably going to air just after Hanukkah has actually begun. It'll be day two. It'll be day two. Day two of Hanukkah for you. Yeah. So, but we'll put the links to the other podcast interviews we had with you. So lots of fun. We'll put those down below so people can go back and watch as well. So thanks again for joining us. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Okay,